In today's video, we're taking a look at hand sanitizer and how we can use some really creative lighting to turn this into a fantastic macro photography subject. So stick around and I'll get started in just a sec. Hi guys, I'm Ben from Adapt Looks, and today we're taking a look at this hand sanitizing gel. Now, this stuff is actually for um, handling lizards and reptiles, uh, but it does the same job as a lot of the stuff that we're seeing around all of the time for obvious reasons. Um, we got this stuff at the beginning of the year with the intention of taking it to the photography show in Birmingham, which subsequently got cancelled and moved online. So I've got this big bottle of hand sanitizing gel uh, sitting around, and I thought we could uh, redo one of the subjects that I did uh, almost two years ago now um, in bubbles. We did uh, dish soap bubbles as they rise from the bottom of the dish soap bottle up to the top and this stuff is going to be very similar but with some key differences. The first thing that we need to do, as we did with our hand soap, is to remove the labels on the bottles. Uh, now I'm going to uh, try and take this off as cleanly as possible without leaving any residue or torn paper bits. Uh, the cleaner you can get it, the better view you can get through the outside of the bottle. I've come down here to my coffee table to set up my camera and start shooting. But before we do that, I just wanted to talk to you very quickly about the difference between uh, this hand sanitizer and the dish soap that we were using last time. The most obvious difference is, of course, that this is colorless. It's clear, so we can see all the way through it. Uh, whereas the dish soap that we were using had this uh, dark green hue to it and we had a yellowy one as well. This means that we can use uh, a lot more colour in our lighting to uh, get some cool colours in our final images. The other difference is that this is actually a little bit more uh, liquidy. Um, the dish soap was a little bit more viscous and the more viscous you can find uh, your liquid, uh, the more it's going to hold those big bubbles in place. If you've got something that's quite uh, runny and liquidy like this is, those big bubbles are going to shoot straight to the top uh, very quickly and it's going to be harder to grab them. So it's going to be a little bit trickier to get larger bubbles in here, but we might be able to get uh, a lot more shots of smaller bubbles doing their thing. The last thing that you want to uh, look out for when you're buying a bottle of goo to try out is uh, the shape of the bottle and the type of stickers that are on it. Uh, these stickers have come off really nicely, really cleanly. Uh, last time they didn't do so well, they were leaving residue all over the front of the bottle. Uh, the front of this bottle is nice and flat. If you have a curved one, you're going to run into a lot of distortion and problems with the actual plastic of the bottle interfering with the images of the bubbles inside. You're not going to be able to see through with your lens without it distorting the look of the bubbles inside. So try and get a bottle with a nice flat face on it. You don't need any particularly specific camera equipment for shots like these. Uh, they're quite fun to play around with no matter what kind of camera and lenses you have. There are a few things that will help you along your way though if you're looking out for uh, the type of camera that you want to be using. You're going to need a DSLR or something with a lot of zoom, so a couple of lenses will really help. I've been shooting with um, a 100mm macro lens and also a reverse lens setup with uh, this extension tube. The extension tube gets us really, really close and uh, the, uh, the normal macro lens gets us some really nice sharp shots of a lot of bubbles from a little bit further out. So a DSLR with changeable lenses is really handy. DSLR really helps with your resolution as well. A camera with a large resolution means that you can crop into these bubbles a little bit more, crop out any extra space, particularly when it comes to videography. I'm going to be taking a lot of video today and my uh, D5600 can only shoot 1080p, so I'm not going to be able to crop these uh, videos all that much uh, when I put them into this video, which is also going to be 1080p. If you have a camera uh, capable of 4K video, I definitely recommend shooting on that higher resolution 4K so that you can then crop down to 1080p and get a much closer uh, shot of the, uh, the bubbles doing their thing. If you're more interested in stills, the last little piece of equipment that I'd recommend is a shutter release cable. 
These things are really cheap and it just helps uh, keep the camera stable while you're taking your exposures. You can plug this in and take an image without having to touch the camera and shaking these super close shots of the bubbles. The last piece to the puzzle here is our lighting. And you can see here that I've got my Adapt Look Studio here, uh, which is providing all of the light and all of the color for our images today. I've got my control pod sat on the mini tripod, giving it a lot of range of movement. I can get my lighting arms all the way around my bottle. So uh, right now I've got a white lighting arm here, plugged in and pointing at the back of my hand sanitizer bottle. I've also got a blue lighting arm coming around here and pointing through the side. And this is going to be our main advantage of using a uh, clear uh, substance here. I can get color coming from a couple of different directions and I can really play around with the different types of light, the different types of color. So I've got lots of different colors of color filters. I've got different colored lighting arms. And I'm going to be plugging these in, changing them around so that I have light falling on uh, the bubbles and providing a background as well. You can see from the uh, the shot that we've got here, we've got lots of tiny little bubbles. Uh, I've got a purple color filter on the white lighting arm, which is providing a nice, deep, uh, mysterious purple hue. Uh, now, the bubbles that are in front of that are actually in shadow because we're looking straight against them with uh, this big, bright light in the background. To somewhat counteract that and give a little bit of a highlight in the bubbles themselves, we've got this blue light at the side. So if I take away that, uh, that purple light, we can see that there's just tiny little highlights of blue on each of those tiny little bubbles. And that's because the light is coming from the side. So you can really play around with this, maybe adding some color into uh, the bubbles and only having white light in the background, that's pretty effective, uh, but also putting color into the background and having white light coming and shining onto the bubbles. So play around with the different lighting arms, the different colors that you can uh, shine and highlight onto your bubbles. Speaking of the bubbles, um, there's another thing, another tip uh, that I want to give you uh, regarding shaking your bottle. When you first get your hand sanitizer or dish soap or whatever it may be, um, the temptation is going to be to shake it. There's probably not going to be many bubbles. It's going to have been sat on a shelf for quite some time uh, and you're going to want to see what those bubbles are like. By all means, give it a little shake to start off with and just see what that viscosity is like. Um, but if you shake it too much, you're going to end up with a lot of bubbles suspended in the solution. Now, the more bubbles that are suspended here, the more opaque the whole thing is going to get and the trickier it's going to be to get some images. So make sure you're ready for shooting before you start shaking too much. When you are shooting, if you end up with too many bubbles suspended in your solution, it's looking a little bit chaotic. All you need to do to uh, counteract this is just to leave it to settle for uh, probably a few hours and all of those tiny little bubbles will eventually make their way up to the top and disperse. So while you're shaking your bottle, uh, make sure you're shaking it just enough to get some nice big bubbles, but not too much to turn all of those bubbles down into really, really tiny ones. I'm pretty happy with those shots that we got using our 100mm lens, uh, but now it's time to get a little bit closer. And the way that I'm going to be doing that is by reversing a lens. Now, I've talked about this a couple of times in previous videos, so if you want to go and see how to do this uh, for, say, some moss, uh, I'll link a video up here, and you can see really how close these things get. It's a little bit hard to tell with the bubbles uh, because they're always different sizes, but I can assure you we are going to be getting some really high magnification factors here. 
What I'm going to be doing is reversing this 28mm uh, uh, manual Tekina lens. So this is quite an old lens, it's got no autofocus, it's got, um, you know, all of the, uh, the old style clicky rings for our aperture. Um, and what I'm going to be doing is mounting this onto the camera backwards. So if this was the face of my camera, uh, this is going to be the front of my lens. And you can see that looks a little bit strange, but trust me, it works. Uh, it's a really cheap way of getting a lot of magnification without going out and buying really expensive dedicated macro lenses. The way to reverse a lens like this is simply to get a little reversing ring. You can see that reversing ring on the front here. It's just this little piece of silver. Uh, the rest of this is actually an extension tube. Uh, what this means is that we can further extend our magnification uh, by uh, extending the distance from uh, the front of our camera to the front of our reversed lens. So I can uh, twist this around and it's going to get longer and longer and longer with more and more magnification. I think using this clear hand sanitizer is a little bit more interesting than the uh, the green dark stuff that we were using last time, uh, simply because we can use a lot more colors. Uh, adding in those uh, colored lighting arms and using the color filters on our white arms uh, really allows for a lot of uh, customizability within the bubbles themselves. Adding tiny little catch lights of single colors and moving the, uh, the background to have all sorts of different shapes uh, can be really, really effective. Uh, I really enjoy shooting bubbles, if you hadn't already noticed. Um, I've wanted to redo this one for a little while, but I'll leave the other one up so you can still go and watch that if you like. Uh, I'll put them all into a playlist for bubbles, which includes a couple of other methods of shooting bubbles as well, including some really interesting uh, oil on water bubbles. Go and check out that playlist if you uh, want some more ideas and inspiration for getting some uh, cool, abstract, colourful images of different types of bubbles. I'll link it up in the top right hand corner for you now, uh, so you can go and check that out. Uh, for now, I've really enjoyed uh, redoing this subject, shooting some more of these uh, these bubbles moving slowly up through uh, viscous liquids, and the fact that it was a clear liquid this time uh, really gave me the opportunity to explore a little bit more with colour, so I'm happy with that, I'm happy with my results. Let me know what you guys think to my results down in the comment section as usual. Uh, leave a like if you enjoyed the video uh, and make sure to uh, subscribe if you want more macro photography ideas and inspiration in the future. For now though guys, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.